Hey guys, this is Tech Nitwit. I'm going to be bringing you guys another wonderful HP Pavilion gaming PC. Um, you're probably like, why do I got a piece of paper in my hand? Well, usually I, I, I wouldn't do this, but I have so much crap to get over with you guys or talk over with you guys. You know, for instance, this thing has about 10 or 15 CPUs that uh, I'll probably put a diagram up here, but you know, that's later into the video. So I just wanted to go over some of the stuff in here, you know, um, the things that it can come with and whatnot. So this is gonna be like a general overview of upgrading parts, what you can use, what you can't use, you know, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, one more thing I do wanna say is if there's anything I overlooked and you guys wanna know about it, throw it in the comment section down below. And I have, I, if there's anything I miss, I and I realize it in an editing or post or any of that stuff, I'll throw it down in the description. I also put a ton of information down there. So, you know, take a look at my description and it should be in there. Um, and that's pretty much it guys. So um, one other thing I wanted to tell you about is there's gonna be a bunch of HP videos coming up with other PCs. I'm gonna have a build video. Now with the build video, it's gonna be a little bit different than some YouTubers. I wanna, I'm probably gonna hold people's hands. So I hope so, any of you that are watching it for entertainment, it doesn't offend any of you guys. I'm doing that for the people that own PCs like this. I'm trying to get them to break into our market so they can, you know, not spend so much on a name brand like this and get more, you know, power and, you know, performance out of their PC. So really I'm gonna hold hands like A to B to C to D. And the reason is, is like, say for instance, I'm putting the memory in and they're like, why are you putting it in slots, you know, uh, A2 and B2 instead of A1 and B2? Uh, well, and depending on if they own the same motherboard that I'm doing or if they own a different manufacturer, I can be like, all right, you're gonna open up your manual, you're gonna go to the spot in the manual, you're gonna see your memory, and that's gonna tell you what slots to put in for what type of RAM you have and what type of board you bought. So of course, if you have this PC and you're following along with me, if you have an Intel or AMD, it shouldn't matter. If you have an Nvidia or a Radeon, it shouldn't matter. It should be all the same thing and you should be able to follow along. So guys, I'm gonna bust this guy open so I can kind of have a demo to show what parts I'm talking about and where they go. I will be having another video of this guy with upgraded parts and doing more benchmarks and gaming. I have some more, I've already filmed some more benchmarking and gaming film for this guy. Um, this will be up and coming after all my Unify videos are done, edited and released. So I will be right back with you guys and we will get this thing open and I'll be back with you. Hey guys, uh, we're back here and I got the case off of this and we're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna start talking about the different Intel CPUs you can put in here. Now you can put the ninth and eighth gen in here. It does allow a bunch of different processors. I will have a list up here and I'll keep it up here for a little bit. I'll also probably put a list down in the description. So the one thing you wanna be aware is there are some that are not on the list that I, I didn't exactly seek out. What this board and um, power supply allows is up to 65 watts. So if it's anything below 65 watts, eighth, ninth gen, you're good to go. Um, this is an H370 chipset, and yeah, you cannot use K processors. So don't buy any K processors. If you do ever plan on buying processors, they will not work with this. So um, it pretty much works from uh, Celeron, Pentium, all the way up i3, i5, i7 if you really, really want to. I don't know why you would use a Pentium or Celeron, but if you do have a Pentium or Celeron and they did make this model with them, you have to be aware that your power supply is probably only gonna be the 310 watt power supply. So you're gonna wanna go on the HP site and go ahead and get that, you know, if that's something you're looking to upgrade. So some big things that come in small packages, which I can say is the, in this case, um, this is the 690-0073W is what I'm showing you right here today. Uh, of course, you know, let's move on to memory. The, the motherboard supports two uh, sticks of DDR4 2288-pin. Uh, of course, it's set for DDR, um, DDR266, which I have personally tested you know, DDR3000 and DDR3200. Now, the DDR that is set in this is PC4 21 3000, or 300, sorry, 21,300. The motherboard supports two sticks of four, eight, and 16 gigabit DIMMs. And uh, yeah, it's in dual channel mode. So I have personally tested 3000 and 3200. I think I already said that. I tested 16 and eight gigabyte DIMMs in both versions, they, they all work. And the one thing that you're wondering like, well, hey, Technet, why don't you tell me to go get 266 megahertz memory? 
Well, the, with the economic you know, price of 3000 and 3200 and the commonality of just what's out there, you're more likely to find a 3000 megahertz RAM or a 3200 megahertz RAM and then you are 266. Now you're probably also wondering, well, what about cast latencies, cast latency? Um, that is another number, usually the lower number, the faster, but once we're into this DDR4, you're looking like the 15s, 16s, 17s, 18s, 19s. It's, it, it, it cast latency, the lower the number, the faster the RAM. So you have two things that, that dictate speed on RAM. It's gonna be your megahertz and then your cast, cast latency. So the, the higher the megahertz, the lower that cast latency, the better the RAM. Of course, as you get up at higher megahertz and lower numbers, the price starts to go up. Uh, so if you're looking for a 32 gig kit, you're probably gonna spend anywhere between 160 to two something. Um, a 16 gig kit, you can find for anywhere from about 70 to about $140, depending on your megahertz and cast latency. see. Now, really the 3000 megahertz isn't gonna be utilized by this motherboard. So you're gonna wanna, you're not gonna wanna get like 4,000 megahertz, it's, it's, it's just gonna down clock it. So there's really no reason to do that. Just uh, one thing I do want to mention, guys, if you're watching this video and you're enjoying my content, please hit that like button. It really, really helps me out on uh, YouTube and throw a comment down below. Uh, it helps with the algorithm and all that stuff. And I'm just getting started. So, you know, if you like my content, please do that. If you watch this point, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. So this motherboard does come with uh, one 16X PCI Express slot and one 1X. It also comes with two uh, M.2 uh, slots. One is filled by the WLAN, LAN, which is a 2230, and the second one is, an, you know, of course, uh, the NVMe or SSD drive, which is a 2280. Hold on here. Yeah, I think it's a 2280. I, I don't have it on. Yeah, 2280. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the, the card size. And that is this guy right here. This is a 2280. That's that size. I don't think you can go any smaller. I do not. I have not had it off but I do not see any other pinholes for the smaller M.2 drives. Now, one other thing while I'm in drives is this only this cage only supports uh, either an SSD or a 3.5 bay uh, type drive. So if you look, you know, there's your SSD. Now you could take double-sided sticky tape and stick another SSD in here and do two SSDs. Or what you could do is if you wanted like a four terabyte or three terabyte or two terabyte disc, put your 3.5 in there or 2.5, whichever you buy, and then get some double-sided sticky tape and stick this guy somewhere in the case. Now, one thing that you're gonna have to be aware is you will need an extra SATA cable if you do something like that. And there's already two SATA power cables that come, oh, come on, get unstuck. There's already two SATA power cables that do come with this PC. Uh, none of these are plugged in, and one of these are free when you currently buy it with the NVMe drive or an SSD NVMe M.2 installed. So, yeah, you're going to have to get an extra cable and also be aware that screws do not come with this. Also, I'm pretty sure if you get the non-M.2 version that either has the NVMe or an SSD, it probably doesn't come with a screw. They sell those online on Amazon. You can get them in four packs. They're pretty cheap. Same thing with the screws for the SSD or a 3.5, they are not included. So be aware that if you're upgrading this drive, you're gonna need those. Um, if you're wondering what they are, just go into Google really quick and type in 3.5 or 2.5 or look down in my description, whichever is gonna be easiest. All right, guys, I know I was touching about the M.2s and everything else. I wanted to go in about the type of hard drives you can get. You can, put, you can put a 16 terabyte in here all the way down to a one gigabyte or even megabyte if you really, really wanted to. It doesn't matter as long as it is SATA six, you know, six gigabits per second, even SATA um, uh, three, uh, I'm sorry, three gigabytes per second. So that's SATA two and SATA one. I know it's a little bit confusing. They will both work. Pretty much any SSDs you can find on the market will work with this. Uh, it's there's not unless you're looking at like the PCI Express slot types or NVMEs that go in the, the slots, that stuff will not work for this. But any you know 3.5 or 2.5 that you can find will fit in this drive cage. Now be aware, I think I said the screws don't come with it. They are different. 2.5 screws are different than 3.5 screws. So the, you know, the 2.5s are a little bit finer and then the 3.5s are a little bit coarser. So um, the only thing with hard drives is you, if you're looking for a scratch disc, it, you can get you know, higher capacity. You're not looking at performance, but if you are looking at trying to get a little bit of performance out of this drive, you're gonna want the cache size and the RPMs to be higher 
What I mean by that, they have 64 megabyte, 128 and 256 uh, megabyte caches on the hard drives. You're gonna want 128 or 256. Uh, they do have 5,400 RPMs and 7,200 7, RPM drives. You're gonna squirrel that, you are gonna, I can't believe I just said squirrel. You are going to want a 7,200 RPM drive with that 256 megabytes of cache. So it's very, very simple. With SSDs, the size really doesn't matter. You get a two terabyte, one terabyte. Um, you can get a 960 gigabyte. You can get a 500 gigabyte. You can get a 256 gigabyte. Uh, NVMEs, I know that this is rated up to 512 um, gigabytes, but I'm sure if you put a one terabyte in there, this is the 370 uh, Intel 370 chipset. The drivers will be there for, I think, up to a two terabyte NVMe. So that's where you can go up to with that. All right, guys, if you want to get an external hard drive, it is possible to plug it in the back or the front. There are, you know, you're going to want to plug that into a USB 3.0 slot. And you know, of course, there's ones in the backs and ones in the front. It's going to look a lot prettier if you plug it into the back of the PC. Uh, them sizes, the, the sizes of drives that they come with externals, you can get all different sizes and pretty much they're going to be in one, two, threes, fours. Uh, I think they got six terabytes and eight terabyte external USBs and they all work for this just like the, the 3.5s internally. It's pretty much a 3.5 disc that they put in the little case that comes out to USB-C or USB uh, 3.1. So you also, if I'm not mistaken, this has a USB-C on the front. It does. If you want to hook up a USB-C, you could go right into here. Uh, so the other thing that is, if you want to kind of go on the cheap, then you find a good deal on like a 256 gigabyte uh, USB drive. You could also use that for some extra storage. I probably wouldn't do it for programs. I probably wouldn't use an external for programs. If you have kids, dogs, pets, they bump that, you're in the middle of the program, it's gonna cause some issues and, and whatnot. And you know, thing, you, good things usually don't happen when that happens, so. All right, guys, we're gonna move on to the next subject. Oh, about the power supply. Uh, some of the lower models do come with the 310 watt power supply, but if you have an i3 with a graphics card, you're gonna have the 400 watt power supply. Uh, most of the 690s that are, if you have an i, i anything in a 690, it's gonna have the 400 watt power supply. Some versions might not have it in there, but you can always take the case off. There's one screw back here and just look at the thing and there you go. They do not label it on the box. So if you're like, oh, I'll go look at my box, it's not there. I will have a link for an extension cable that you can throw onto here. If you wanna be able to stick your heart, your SSD like up here or wherever, I'll have that in the description below and you know that'll get you a link for that. And okay, I'm gonna move on to graphics card here. So I will put a list up of here of everything HP says you can use. Pretty much it's, you can put a 1050 in, a 1060, but you cannot put a 1070 in, it's too much wattage out of here. Uh, moving on to the next series, it will do a 1650, a 1660, 1660 Ti, and, and so on. I'm not gonna get in, the max one is a, 60, uh, a 2060 Super. So you can put as low as a, and that's for Nvidia. Um, I, there are, I'm pretty sure there's some Radeons that are on the list, but not as many as Nvidia. These are the ones that I know 100% will work with this. Uh, the, the 2060 Super is a 22 watt card, and it's the same wattage uh, utilization in uh, per se the 2060 non-Super. One thing I didn't mention is about that second cable. They're both marked, uh, what was it, HD? Yeah. They have it marched HDD1 and HDD2. It's a it's a blue port and the light blue port. This white port is for the DVD-ROM. And then of course down here is your gonna be your small M.2 guy. Really down, if you can see in there, get some of these wires out of your way. Um, I plan on doing a teardown video with this, this guy. So you guys will see this all in a hundred different pieces. And then, uh, yeah. And I also have a heat sink video planned for this one as well. Um, it runs about 72 to 74 Celsius idle on stock temperatures or gaming and benchmarking. I expect to probably drop that about eight Celsius, maybe 10 if I'm lucky with, uh, uh, of course, an aftermarket uh, heatsink. So guys, that is uh, pretty much it, but uh, I'm gonna do one other thing really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and measure the case from this lip to the inside. And that is coming at a 10 and 
a little, what, one eighth, 10 inches and one eighth. But if I come over here and I look at this graphic card, I can get this graphics card in here. It's like playing a Demanji puzzle, you know, you know, you're risking your life and, and liberty. It, it, it's, it's like playing Jumanji with Jenga. I tell you, it's crazy. You can get this size of graphics card in. I know for a fact I've had it in here. Now, of course, the 970 has dual sixes. So if you wanted something like this, and I don't think, I think this would be too much wattage for this power supply. But if I come here and measure this guy, it is, if I come here and measure this from face to, to brim, it's about nine and a half inches. So that's a normal 970. This is a, a double fan design. So just be aware that this size card will fit in here. Uh, now you might have to remove this little black bracket depending on how wide it is. It's literally two, uh, no, sorry, one screw and then it slots up and it's off. So it's a, it's a pretty simple design. Sometimes good things come in small packages. This thing is definitely one of those. I absolutely love this thing. I, I'm not a pre-built fan, but you know, if you are not the type of person that feels comfortable building a PC and you want to get into the gaming market, this is going to be, you know, an entry level mid range gaming computer, uh, especially with the 1660 Ti, them things run from anywhere from, I mean, you can get them on sale for 240, 250, but I've seen them 340 uh, and then you get a 2060 for 300 bucks. So it, the, the, the 1660 is a, TI is a really nice graphics card. Uh, you can play Fortnite at 120 frames per second on max settings. So, uh, yeah. And uh, I think that's about it, guys. And this is Tech Nitwit, and this was a Tech Nitwit video. And y'all have a wonderful evening. Hey, guys, it's Tech Nitwit here. Make sure you guys subscribe and like and hit that bell. Thanks.